What is going on everybody? This is Dylan with Dylan Talks Tone. Uh, you saw the thumbnail. Today we are going to do some very interesting tests. Um, Glenn Fricker made this fantastic video uh, about why pickups don't matter anymore. But in his follow-up video to that, or I guess it was kind of together, uh, he talked about how specifically with high gain tones, that is the case, which you know what, even as a pickup builder, I kind of, kind of have to agree with him. Not 100%, but kind of. Here's the thing though, you can't take it as a blanket statement because everybody's rig is different, everybody's guitar tone is different, and we approach it differently. So I'm gonna demonstrate kind of the opposite uh, to what Glenn did with his video on the opposite side of the output spectrum, if that makes sense. And we've got a bunch of guitars to do it here with. I'm gonna show you a bunch of things today. Why are we talking about this? Well, the idea of an electric guitar is to have the strings and the pickup make a little bit of electricity, okay? They just make a little bit of electricity, they send it to the amp, and then the amp makes that electricity bigger. It amplifies it. And then it sends it to the speaker so we can hear it. That's just super simple. But depending on the amplifier, it can only make the signal so big before it can't make it any bigger. So then what happens is the tops of the signal get clipped off like this, like where it just kind of clips off. And a uh, compression happens with that because some of the signal basically doesn't exist anymore. There's also overdrive pedals that clip it off on purpose. They, you've probably heard sawtooth wave, square wave, things like that. Uh, it'll change the signal by cutting off the, cutting it off and it just will no longer exist anymore. The more you do that, the higher gain you kind of get and the more of that signal gets clipped and compressed, the less nuance between pickups you can hear. But on, so Glenn Frigger is 100% correct on that. Does it happen this defined though? Not really. There's a couple factors we wanna factor in here. One is that the signal that goes into the guitar or that comes out of the guitar into the amplifier and then out of the amplifier uh, doesn't look like a perfect sine wave. It kind of looks like this. It's a little bit messier and see how oh, it's got these peaks here and there and it looks kind of messy more or less. So it doesn't evenly just get cut off. Certain frequencies get cut off uh, by the compression in the amp. Thing is, is certain pickups only make certain frequencies or make certain frequencies more, uh, so they kind of have to complement each other. So what your pickup is doing has to be complemented by what your amp is doing. Let's take all of these guitars. We're gonna use them all at some point. We're gonna do single coils first. And we're gonna go into as clean of an amp as possible. We're gonna use the Princeton and we're going to make it as clean as possible. And we're gonna go from the lowest output pickup to the highest output pickup. You're not only gonna hear the tonal differences between those, but you're also gonna hear the compression that happens in the amplifier after the signal leaves the guitar. So let's look at our single coils first. Now, one thing we should say before we do this, we're using different guitars. We're not talking about the same tone because scale links are different and these are different guitars and they're just different guitars. They're different pickups. Some, we got some uh, Dylan pickups there. We got some PRS pickups there. We're gonna use just the neck pickups uh, in these single coils and you're gonna hear the difference and how it interacts with the amp. So you can't be like, oh, this is the same tone. It's not like that. What we're trying to do is talk about the interaction of the pickup with the amp, purely electrical.
Okay, so let's go from lowest output to highest output on the single coils first and talk about uh, our thoughts there. So the Fiore, definitely the lowest output of the three single coil guitars that we played, just the neck pickup. Very, very cool. Uh, I love how clean it is. I love how punchy it is, but the mid range is different than the Silver Sky that came after it. Now, if we play the Silver Sky right after it, same, I never touched the amp settings through the entire thing, okay? So um, play the Silver Sky right after it, it hits the amp a little harder. It does compress a little bit. And these Fender amps on the edge of that compression, in my opinion, are a little flubby and farty sounding. I don't necessarily like that about a Fender amp, any Fender amp really. Um, so that's not how I personally use it. I was just trying to illustrate a point here. Then when we put the P90 into it, it really hits it hard. What's interesting is it's not just about the output of the pickup, but it's about what frequencies get amplified the most based on how each pickup is wound. And you can really hear that with the Fiore pickup versus the Silver Sky pickup because at the same exact amp settings, the pickups sound different and they hit the amp differently. This is the area where I think pickup winds and magnet types and all those sorts of things really, really matter is that kind of edge of breakup clean getting into that compression sort of stage of guitar tone, which so many people really enjoy. We're gonna talk about why that's not the only factor in just a second. Let's get through the rest of these guitars. We put the P90 in there and it just totally gets into full on fender flub. If I was gonna use that properly, I would actually drive that harder probably with an overdrive pedal or I would turn the volume on the amp up to about seven. It was on four and a half for this test. So I would actually push that amp super hard with a P90, the volume first, and then a P90 on top of it if I was really gonna use it for something. It was a little too flubby for me. But to illustrate the point, that low end started to just kind of go away. We're gonna talk about why that's important to think about ahead of time after we get through the rest of the pickups. Now, let's get on into the humbucker stuff. The lowest output pickup of the bunch that we have here is the PRS Fiore. Very low output, barely even compressed the amp at all, if at all. Uh, sounded almost kind of single coily with a really interesting mid-range, right? Uh, which makes sense because Mark Letiri wants that kind of funky sound. So really low output, super clean. Uh, you could hear the mid-range pokiness of it. Uh, and it was just, a, it's a nice complex sound. I actually really like it. And then the next in output would be uh, if we're looking at how many K a pickup is, uh, then that would be the Slash Les Paul. Sounded like a Les Paul. I mean, hit the amp hard, sounded great at 8.2 K. It's pretty interesting, right? Then we put the MGK Schecter. Now the Schecter is like 14 K or something, ceramic magnet, super hot pickup. But what's weird is, is it, pushes the amp into compression. It didn't sound any dirtier, but it also sounded quieter. This is where we start talking about the difference in which frequencies get compressed by the amp because which frequencies are getting made by the pickup. So the pickup is acting different because the pickups are different. They're wound differently. Even though the pink guitar is hotter, it's quieter because it's compressing differently. So we'll talk about why that's important in a minute. So we went from not as hot all the way to the hottest and the hottest guitar was actually quieter. I actually had to mess with the levels to get it to sound right in the recording side, not in the amp. I left the amp alone, but in the recording side, we had to adjust a little bit so that you could hear it properly. The hottest pickup was the quietest pickup. When customers call us here or email us at Dylan Talks Tone, put one of those contact us forms in, <clears throat> and they're like, which pickups should I put in this guitar? I want to upgrade these pickups. I want, and this is the one I get the most. I want a hot such and such. I want a hot single coil. I want a hot, and why is that? Usually it's because they feel like they're not being heard in the guitar mix that they're playing in. Either it's the music they're recording, or it could be uh, they're playing in a band and they're not being heard, so they want to be louder, so they want something hotter. So uh, this is why 
We want to know about the rest of the rig. We want to know how you play, what pedals you use, understand your amp, and understand your guitar because it, you have to zoom out and look at everything as the, the entire rig. That's why on this portion of clean into edge of breakup into even more than that, but before high gain, like uh, Glenn Fricker was talking about, that's its own department. But everything else is very nuanced. The frequencies that your pickups are the best at making, the resonant peak and the frequencies surrounding that resonant peak, can change based on your magnet choice, based on your wine count, based on all those other things. And they can be heard in a very nuanced way at these lower gain thresholds. Your amp is also better or worse at amplifying certain things. Take for example, a Marshall versus an AC30 versus a Fender. So do you want a real sparkly clarity, real jangly pickup into an AC30? Some might. I personally don't because it's too harsh for me. Would you want a very dark pickup, like the pink guitar over there, into a very dark amp and then maybe get lost in a mix? This is where the choices matter. This is where understanding the entire rig together matters. Because if you just say, I want a hotter pickup, what happens? We make more voltage, we cut more off the top, it compresses it more, and in comparison to other guitars, it sounds quieter, not louder. Lower output pickups, for example, these two have a nice strong mid-range, and that's where your voc that's where your voice, like the vocal quality of a guitar is, is in the nice strong mid-range. Because the pickups are not as hot, because they don't compress as much in those frequencies, depending on the amp that you put them into, you can hear them into a mix more and they stick out. That's why Slash sounds so good when he solos, because of those that particular quality of those pickups. Our Thrust and Alnico 2 pickups kind of do the same thing. So that's why it's important to look at pickup output, amp type, and what your pedal chain looks like, and figure out what frequencies you're trying to hear. And remember that the guitar is largely a vocal instrument. The more you scoop the mids out, the less you're going to be heard in a mix, the more you uh, accentuate low-end chug kind of sounds, you're going to lean more towards the bass player and get lost in him. The more you lean towards the high end, all of your nuanced clarity is going to get lost in cymbals and maybe keys if you have those in your band. So understanding, and I steal this from John Bollinger, the sonic space that each of your instruments sit in and understand where that works on stage or in your mix, even when you're playing at home by yourself, you know, and recording on your laptop or whatever, it's really important to know that. So the voice that you choose with the pickup in your guitar is important, but it has to be all the rig, not just the guitar, not just the amp, and not just the pedals. Zoom out and look at everything together. Thanks for hanging out, you guys. This has been fun. This is a kind of an interesting video because it helps us to think about how, how we want things to sound. Um, and the, you notice this is not anything about I want to sound like a certain person. This is like, what is my gear actually doing? And so I think it's kind of cool. Uh, Glenn Fricker was dead on with his video. I loved it. I love his stuff. I think he is... I love his level of animation, we'll call it that. He's very passionate about what he does, so I think it's really cool. And uh, I thought, you know, I feel the same but differently in different areas of the sonic space, so I thought I would make a video about it. Do me a favor, hit the subscribe button and the like button if you like more stuff like this. And uh, we have a podcast comes out every Tuesday that we do live. We have news on Wednesday. We have a live stream on Thursday. And sometimes we have a cool video on Friday, too. Thanks for hanging out. And we'll see you tomorrow.